Ishana Rapture. Oh Father and our God, before your presence we come one more time. For your benevolence, goodness, and your care, we thank you. For your Holy Spirit that you have dwells within us, we thank you. For your word that you have given to us, we thank you. For the peace that you have given to us, we thank you. For the love that you have lavished upon us, we thank you. God, we bless your holy name. We speak well of your greatness. And we are about to eat from your table of your holy word. Your rhema, your logos. God, I pray that your word will go forth tonight. And bring realization and repentance to your people. Lord, open up our understanding that we may see the breadth, the length, and the height, and the love of God that transcendent all knowledge and all wisdom and all faculty of reasoning and ability. So we bless you even, O Lord, as we exalt thy worthy name in the exalted name Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen. Praise ye the Lord one more time. We want to thank God for his great mercy and kindness towards us that we could back in this night in his word. Amen. And we do a lot of rap and tiddle and dig and exegese from his word. And we will continue to do so tonight by the Holy Spirit that give the preeminence and the clearance. Did you hear that? The Holy Spirit did the preeminence and give us the clearance. Now we are in Acts chapter 13. Some deep truth is in here. And we want to dig out some. My God, and see how much we could get spiritual edification. Is that all right? Acts 13, as we go into God Holy Writ. And it read like this from the King James Version. Acts chapter 13. And remember the subject that we are dealing with is when God speak. And there's a voice speaking Acts 13. Now, there were in the church that was Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Nigger and Lucius of Cyrene and Mani which had been brought up with Herod the church and Saul 
as they ministered. Listen to this, my brethren, my friends, e-members. As they ministered to the Lord. Note, they are ministering to the Lord. And fasted. They were unfasting. The Holy Spirit said, oh, here we go. The Holy Spirit speak here. Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, from the work where unto I have called them. I have called. It means God has called them. And he said it here. I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid hands, laid their hands on them they sent them away one two three let's see if we could get some gem before we go to verse four we notice that the first official gentiles mission was carried by paul and barnabas who were sent notice the word sent in other words they were commissioned by the holy spirit uh-huh by the church at Antioch to Cyprus and the city in the southern part of Rome, uh, in Romania, uh, the providence of Galatia. The church was characterized by many outstanding believers of the body of Christ, prophet and teachers, Simon called nigger. It was just a Latin word which mean black. Latin word which means black was apparently nicknamed for dark complexion and suggests that he was perhaps from Africa. Did I say perhaps from Africa? Perhaps to say I I was in Israel a couple of years ago and you're a black Jew. Yeah, I saw them. And some have suggested that he may have been the one of Cyrene, or Simon of Cyrene in Mark 15, 21, who carried Jesus' cross, according to some writer of the illusion. This term was generally called use of children who were brought up even in Israel. And so we're going to look now according to what the Holy Spirit did in verse 2. The Bible says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit speak. The Holy Spirit sent them on mission. The Holy Spirit give guidance for the mission to accomplish because without the Holy Spirit of God, might, I might say this publicly and clearly, you cannot accomplish nothing, sir. Madam, you cannot. The Bible is very clear. The Holy Spirit is a driving force behind or inside every believer. In front, above, beneath, all over. The Holy Spirit. The paracleta, the comforter, the one that direct all churches. And so the Holy Spirit now give the direction and the dictation as to the separation of Barnabas and Saul, which we call Paul. Note, for the work we are unto I have called them. This tell us that God is the one who called Saul and Barnabas to get the separation to go forth with the gospel as the revelation and the interpretation sent them forth as they were fasting and praying. It is significant, my brother and sister, that the Holy Spirit designated 
the two most imminent event, man, the two foremost, uh -huh, one who is being equipped now to go to propagate the gospel to the Gentiles. They were the missionaries now, lead the pathway as the church begin to plant all over the place. It is evidently true that every believer was to carry on the mission. Every believer in this administration and even in the past administration. Every believer. You as an assignment once you have been called by God, given a gospel, or given the word of truth to God dispense it. Once you seal and signed by God, you should be a mission. And it is very clear as the scripture here. And the Bible says, So they being sent forth by the Holy Spirit. Verse 4, verse 4. So they were sent forth by the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Departed unto Selenia. Selenia, according to here, is uh, 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 by the seaport in Cyprus. It's a large highland, according to some great theologian writer in the Mediterranean Sea. It is formally annexed out by in Rome in about AD 57. And so as a journey uh -huh, and departed, they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Sa Salamis, they preached. Notice now, the Holy Spirit sent them to preach the word of God. Not man's word. Not Saul's word or Paul's word or Barnabas' word. No, the word of God must be propagated. And note where they propagated in the synagogues of the Jews and they also John of John to their ministry. They had also John to their ministry. This is assignment. It getting wider and deeper as John Mark accompanied the apostles to go dispense the word. He was a cousin of Barnabas whom they had recently taken with them from Jerusalem to Antioch. As we see that the Holy Spirit sent these men and we see that the subject when God speak. And so as they begin the ministering of the word of God, watch what happened. Please note, once you call by God, you will have opposition. And when they had gone through the isles unto Pamphos, they found a certain sorcerer. Oops! A certain who? Sasara, a false prophet. Yes, that means the Bible is clear. You have true prophet and you have false prophet. And if you have false, you have true. And if you have true, you have false. And the Bible says, uh -huh, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was but Jesus. Hallelujah. A false prophet, a Jew by the name of our Jesus. This prophet by the name of Eliamas, about Jesus, where they call him the Sassara. In the Greek word, we use the word makos, a false prophet. Or in other words, a magician, an astrologist attached to the political entourage. Oh yes, and an advisor to the governor of Syracuse. Palos, P A U L U S, Sargos Palos. Some have suggested that he is identified with Lucas Sargos Palos, who is also known as to be a curtail, in other words, like Job's Lord, of the Tiber during the reign of Claudius. So you see that you always have people in these categories as long as the gospel is being propagated. False prophet. First seven says, which was with the deputy, here you go, of the country, Sargos Palos, 
a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. I like this. Desire to hear the word of God. You always have some hypocrites. They play two sides of the story. But somehow, God have a way to bring mankind to the understanding and knowledge. The leadership of the Holy Spirit is very critical to the servant of God. Write that down if it misses you. The Holy Spirit is very critical for leadership to the servant of God. If he or she is being led by the Holy Spirit, he is filled with greatness of encouragement. But if he does not fill with the Holy Spirit, look out, false prophet will overtake you and destroy you. It will give to you, my brothers and sisters, great encouragement. Because when you are filled with the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God will give clarity of reasoning and ability and precision and revelation and interpretation. When you have been led by the Holy Spirit, Paul and Barnabas were led by the Spirit. Therefore, they were able to march for triumphantly although they come up against Simon Magus or the false prophet they were filled up with God they knew that their encouragement come from God Almighty but when according to John 16 verse 13 but when he the spirit of truth comes note he will guide you in all truth according to John 16 13 he will not speak on his own. He will speak only what the hearers and he will tell what is yet to come. When the Spirit of God take over, the Spirit of God will give you, tell you what to say. That's why it's good for heed the word, drink the word, sleep the word, study the word, make full proof of the ministry, not your ministry, the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. And note again, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. The Holy Spirit will give them the word what to say according to the scripture here. And the Bible says, but verse 8 as we go further, but Elamas the sorcerer, for so is his name, by interpretation which stood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith here we go again Elamas false prophet trying to turn away the deputy from the faith is assignment is under the spirit of delusion, the spirit of adversary, Satan, the deceiver, want to deceive the deputy from the faith. The magician as a false prophet, as he sent the governor, was accepting the message of Barnabas and Saul. He realized it was uh -huh, a cut uh, for him. His friendship is getting disconnected because he does not want the governor to be friend with Paul and Barnabas. Sagos, while this passage in the scripture, it has interchanged and intentionally shift at this point from Saul to Paul. Paul is a Greek word for the synthetic name. As we find then Saul who also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Set his eyes. Hallelujah. A man of God who filled with the Holy Spirit. Notice even now in Acts chapter 3, we find Peter. When this beggar man, uh -huh, well, Peter said, look on us. 
when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you can look Satan eyeball to eyeball and say, in the name of Jesus, look what's going to happen to this man. The Bible says in Acts chapter 13, verse 9, then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit. The word fill there come from the Greek word pleroma. It demonstrated that Paul was totality filled up and occupied with spirit. A man who is just coming out of fasting and prayer, sent by the Holy Spirit, moving over in this zone where false prophet is. You are a dead man. You're a blind man, Simon Magus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Paul. Paul. Under the supernatural power of the most high God. Note what he declare here. According to verse 10 of Acts chapter 13. And said, Note, O full of all subtlety. In other words, you're full of a Satan. You're full up of witchcraft. You're full up of malice, envy, strife, bitterness. You're a gluttonous person. You're full of all these. No, Paul said it. Oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief. Thou child of the devil. Who? Wow. That's a hard hit by this harm and dangerous soldier of Christ Jesus. Oh, Paul, load him up. Uh -huh. Oh, he called him a child of the devil, an enemy of righteousness. He rebuke his perversion of the truth and strike him with the temporary blindness. When you are under the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, you are dangerous believer. You are harmed to the fullness of the power of God. And Paul, Paul, give him some name here. Uh -huh. Thou child of the adversary, thou art an enemy of righteousness. In other words, you are messing up the gospel of truth. You are messing up holiness. You are messing up righteousness. You are a deceiver. But notice who sent us, Simon Nagos. God, the Holy Spirit, sent us an assignment. And I want to look the cause of the Holy Spirit from God sent uh -huh, Barnabas and Paul. Note if fill up. This is what the church is all about. You must fill up with the Holy Spirit of God. I don't care which church you belongs to, whether Adventist, Moverian, Baptist, Lucarian, name the church. You must be filled up with the Spirit of God. Total occupied by the Spirit of God. There is no room for these of what Paul says. Enemy are bitterness and envy are strife. No room for believer in the context here. You see, because you no know room was in Paul, Paul could declare that you are an enemy of righteousness. Why is an enemy of righteousness? Because he is unrighteous. He's devious. He's a deceiver. He wants to derail the truth. Oh, he wants to turn the man into is unrighteous behavior. That's what happened many a time. People want to turn you away from the gospel of truth. Turn your mind away. And the Bible says, the Bible says, thou an enemy of all uh -huh, righteousness. You're against the truth of the word. And when you're against truth, God will step in. Holy Spirit will step in. The word of God will step in and destroy your eyes. Will thou not cease to pervert the right way of the Lord? See, dear, want to end, want to stop. But when God speaks, nobody can stop God's word. 
But Paul was just dishing out the truth to this false makers. False makers. False prophet. Hallelujah. And verse 11 give us some word of truth here. <laughs> when God speak, when the Holy Spirit speaking to Paul now, look the damage what it will done to this false prophet. Verse 11 says, And now, behold, the hand of the Lord, hallelujah, is upon thee. Behold, look, my friend, the hands of the Lord is upon you. And thou shalt be blind, my God. Blind. The declaration of blindness was upon this false prophet by the name of Nacus. Why Paul declare him to blindness? Because when you can see, you will do a lot of damages. But when you're blind, you can't even see what you are eating. <laughs> and the blindness that Paul declared unto this man here, put him down for a period of time. Why did Paul declare him to be blind? Because he see too much. Yes, when you see too much, you can cause trouble. And you will cause talking to be a part of the trouble. Because he want to talk out this deputy from come to the realization of the word of truth. The Bible says, and behold now, behold, the hands of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind. Thou shalt be blind. What a rebuke. He rebuke his provision of the truth and strike him with temporary blindness. Amazing and stunned by the power of these servants of the Lord over the resident uh -huh, magician. The proconsul believe the doctrine of the Lord. <laughs> you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately note the word that come from the servant of the Most High God that day. At that time, uh -huh, fell on him and mist and darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. This is the Bible. Don't mess with God when he sent his servant them out. You mess with Paul, you mess with God. You mess with Barnabas, you mess with God. You mess with John Mark, you mess with God. You mess with the preacher, you mess with God. You mess with the evangelist, you mess with God. You mess with the missionary, you mess with God. And that's a problem, brother. And that's a problem, sister. Don't you ever dare try it. God have a way to work. Uh-huh. Declare blindness upon this man. Note verse 12. Then the deputy, the deputy, when he saw what was done, believe, being astonished, ha, hallelujah, by the doctrine, note, by the doctrine, of Yahweh, Elohim, by the Lord. He was astonished at the supernatural power. The word that came from Paul's mouth. Remember, Paul is just a vessel speaking by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks to Paul, the clear blindness. And Simon Nagos. And so, 
the deputy turned from darkness to light. The deputy turned from sin to grace. The deputy turned from death to life. That's how salvation works. He turned from a dead man to a live man. Just like what Paul himself wrote. If any man being Christ is a new creation. He turned from the old doctrine of the lying prophet to a truthful doctrine. He turned away from unrighteousness to righteousness. He turned from wrath to peace, tranquility, quietness. This is the word, the deputy, then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believe, receive, acknowledge, and surrender to the most high God. It come to the full realization that what he was eating and drinking from this false prophet, Magus, is no longer applicable. It's no longer good for me. You see, there goes a time when you have to come to the realization that God's word is true. And this is what happened to this. Um, deputy he saw what was done he did not heard he saw it and when you saw it it's that different thing from here is it wonderful that this man believe uh -huh, when the astonishment arrive at the doctrine or the writing of the word of the lord he came to the understanding the evidence has been proven no, when God sent out his servant, you got to have the evidence to show to the people. And the evidence has been shown to this deputy. Uh -huh. When we find that verse 30, now when Paul and his company loose from Parthesos, they came to Pergai, Pamphylia, and John depart from them return to jerusalem the assignment continue as we look on the subject when god speak we see a number of important truth in observation as to paul and barnabas now when they reach but when they depart from paraguay they came to antioch Pisidonia went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and sat down they went to church they sat down and as they sat down look what happened and after the reading of the law and the prophets the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them saying ye men and virgin if ye have any word of exhortation for the people say on Immediately, they identify these men as preachers. They identify them. Isn't it wonderful that wherever you go, wherever you went, wherever you see, wherever you say, people can identify you. You don't need no tag around your forehead. The word of God lives within you. Holy Spirit lives within you. It must reveal from inside, outside. And so here goes Paul, take the opportunity. Then Paul stood up and beckoned with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and he that fear God, give audience. Listen to this, give audience. In other words, give attendance. Open up your ears. 
Paul and Barnabas went into the together the Jewish community on the Sabbath. Paul seems to give great importance to the evangelization of the gospel of the conciliation. This is the truth that God was in Christ, conciliating the world unto himself, did not reckon our offenses. This is where the gospel must be propagated, the word of the conciliation. And when you get the word of the conciliation, you know that you're being justified by faith. It's not of works. It's all about God. And when you have been justified, it means that God declare you're not guilty. You are liberated from sin to grace. You don't need no Sabbath day to keep it holy. You have been justified gratuitously by the grace of God. You don't need ordinances no sir that was hostile against you you don't know it none of these rituals but you did you see it in the scripture that this man this man he did not receive nothing look look let, let's let's backtrack a little bit no no verse 12 in acts 13 just just a reverse then the deputy when he saw what was done remember what the scripture said when he saw what was done believe being astonished at the doctrine of the lord the bible says believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved thou shalt set free from condemnation of sin and death just like what romans 8 1 says therefore now there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ. When you are called by God, saved by God, you are now in Christ. You have been set free. Now that you are not walking according to this course of the world, you are not going according to the prince of the power of the air. Now that you are going according to the leading of the Holy Spirit, you have been driven by the power of the Holy Spirit. You have been now driven by the word of God that wherever he lead you, you will follow. Because of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, then Paul, verse 16, back to verse 16. Then Paul stood up, beckoning with his hand, and said, Men of Israel, and he that fear God, give audiences. In other words, give me a few minutes. He invite all of them to give an audience. Paul stood up, and that he beckoned with his hand. Thus he observing of this authority or the authorization of the presentation of the message. Yeah, I want you to pay attention as both stand to speak and gesture of the ordinances. Men, note, men of Israel, this demonstrate that they were Jew and he that fear God, mm -hmm, Gentiles were there too, who worship the God of the Jews and accept the demand of the law. No, verse 17, the God of the people of Israel choose our father and exalt the people when they dwelt as stranger in the land of Egypt. Woo, Paul is getting deep, man. And with a high harm brought he them out of it. Paul's sermon in the synagogue uh -huh, in Antioch recounted the histriology of God's deliverance of the Jews' nation from the time of Moses from Egypt. Oh my God, the 40 years in the wilderness mm -hmm, and the 450 years that they spent in the land. Uh -huh. The seventh nation conquered in the land of Canaan, listed in Deuteronomy 7 and verse 1. And the Bible says in verse 18, as Paul laid them out, and about the time of the forty years suffered he their manner in the wilderness is giving them the truth. And when he had destroyed seven nations, oh yes, God gave power to Jews to conquer nation upon nation. He divided their land to them by lot. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years. 
Paul is teaching until Samuel the prophet. And afterward, they desire a king. Lord God, deep word for Paul. He's hoping up the Jews of eyes and giving them the truth of the gospel now. Here we go. And God gave unto them Saul, the son of uh, uh, Cush, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. Note again. And when he had removed him, Paul is going somewhere. He raised up unto them David, we know that history, to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son, uh -huh, to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Right there we could preach for five years straight. Listen this good right here. I have found David, the son of Jesse. Remember, uh, Saul could not sit on the throne of David. He could not sit on that throne. Number one, he is from the tribe of Benjamin. And you got to be from the tribe of Judah. Because remember, Jesse, Jesse is the head. Yes. Tribe of Judah, Jesse. And so here goes the word of God. I have found David, the son of Jesse. A man, note, a man after my own heart. As a pastor, as a preacher in Jeremiah, he said he had given pastor who is after my own heart. You're a pastor, you're an evangelist, you got to have the heart of Christ. Number one, you got to love the people that God gave to you. We know for sure sometimes they will rock you and shock you, uh -huh, give you a surprise, but yet love suffered long and it's kind. When God speak to David here, number one, he says, I found David. Number two, a man after my own heart. Number three, which shall fulfill all my will, all my will. We know David messed up, but guess what? David wrote something in Psalms 51 that could every believer should read it. Blot out my transgression. My sin are ever before me. And because David's a person who always acknowledges fault and acknowledges missing the mark are his armor fauna. Hello, you have people who is too proud. You cannot serve God when you are proud. David fell many times, but yet he has his confession to God. Acknowledge his fault. Acknowledge he comes short. We know the history. We know the record. But guess what? He is a man after God's own heart. A man who full fill all my will of this man verse 23 of this man if you just join us please we are on the same subject when god speak uh -huh. verse 20 verse 24 23 of this man said hath god according to his promise raise unto israel a savior this is where paul is going Die right there. He, 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 he go way back in history. Pull it that the Jews can come to the realization how deep it is because you know for sure that uh, Jesus, they don't want to acknowledge Jesus as the Messiah. They always want to ignore. They're still waiting on the Messiah. And because Paul already know the history behind this, it's going all the way back from Moses. 
come down to Samuel, come down to David, come all the way, all the way down and watch it now. Of this man, seed as God according to his promise. Notice the word seed. Seed. In other words, the seed is coming through the lineage of Judah. Yes. And so, and so, when John at first preached before his coming, this, this John that Paul is speaking is John the Baptist. And when, and as John fulfilled, John the Baptist is coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. Note, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, Who think he that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet are not worthy to loose. John will lay out the factor that the one that is coming after me, I'm not in no class, no form, no shape, no fashion, to not even angle the shoes lace after his sandals. I am not worthy to even touch his sandals. I'm not worthy to angle the dust off his feet. I'm not worthy. He said it here. And the Bible says, Now, Paul, going deep, giving you the scripture, and then later we can do some, 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 some exegesis from all of this. Now, listen this, men and brethren, children of the stack of Abraham, listen how Paul addressed them. You know they are the three patriots, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And notice he said, children of Abraham, the stack of Abraham, and whosoever among you fear it God to you is a word of this salvation sent to you salvation sent to them first remember when Christ came he came unto his own and his own refused him because they are still looking for their Messiah. They did expect the Messiah to come with lightning and thunder and destroy the people, them, if, and, and, and destroy everything, riding upon his horse and set them free. But they did not see that the Christ come humble as a babe, grown up, and begin to manifest the supernatural power of God. Because he was sent by God to accomplish and fulfill his assignment. Can we take two more verse as we are about to learn? And the Bible says, verse 26, one more time. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham. In other words, children of the Jews. And whosoever among you feareth God. To you is the word of this salvation sent. Hallelujah. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, we know these rulers, these rulers, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, they are the ones who create a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They knew him not, nor yet the voice of the prophet which are read every sabbath day they have fulfilled them in condemning him hops paul is saying every sabbath on the slain back the same christ are they jesus who died for you let me take this one 29 and 30 and we rest our case listen this and though they found no cause no cause no cause of death in him yet desire the pilot that he should be slain they kill Christ 
they swap Christ and say, give us Barabbas. Give us Simon Magus. Give us the murderer. Give us the killer. Give us the rapist. They rather to have darkness than light. And they thought, they thought, they found no cause of death in him, yet they desire. Away with him, crucify him. Thanks be to God, their eyes were blinded. But now Paul is revealing, lifting off the veil of their eyes, and says, verse 29 and when they had fulfilled all that was written of him they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulchre verse 30 but god but god who is rich in mercy in his manifestation in his will in his plan in his purpose in his counsel in all his administration and his consummation, he raised, look in your Bible, verse 30, but God raised him from the dead, period, according to the scripture. God raised him from the dead. Corruption could not see the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Neither no bone could not break in him. That's why Paul laid out this when God speak. There's a shift now when we picked up this next Bible study. God bless you tonight. And the peace of God and the love of God, the mercy of God, the unity and the bond of the entire peace come to give you realization of your mind. This man that make us trying to hinder to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight might be your friend is doing the same thing to you. I have heard how many times the word of God. But tonight you have heard it very clear. That may go try to stop the deputy from believing, putting up a barrier, putting up endurance, putting up walls to stop the deputy to come to the realization of the truth of the gospel of Christ Jesus. I'm saying to you, my brother, my sister, my friend, that are watching us. Anybody giving you a blockage, hindrance, say goodbye. World, I can't stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ because the word is right here. And if you so do, go into the comment and make your comment. I want to come to know Christ Jesus. And wherever he is right now, just hush your heart. Believe what the word of God said. This is not, not Pastor Boris' word. It's the word of God. And the word of God make a light and a lamp to your pathway. Right where you is, we're going to pray even now. Father, we thank you for your word this night. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that gave assignment to your servants. Then, as they journey, they dispense your word. And as your servants sit over this, your word tonight, I pray somebody will come to the realization of the living God. And be even like this man. Oh my God. And believe that your word is true. Your word is a lamp and a light. Your word is quick. Your word can deliver. Your word can set free. Your word can open eyes. And give clearance to their life. Send a word to their heart even now. Make a 
crooked way pathway for them become straight in the name of Jesus. Blessed God, we thank you for doing it as we give it a praise and the glory in the exalted name Christ Jesus, the Savior and King of this world. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. And if you are a soul giver, ah, uh, my God, if you are a giver and you so desire, listen, this preacher, I said, you so desire from your heart, go and cash up. Make a gift. Make an offering unto the Lord. Dollar sign. Gospel way church. One word. God is the one who gave you all the blessing. And so if you should sow that seed within God's kingdom, it will bring forth. It will germinate. Blessing not only to you but to your children children and not only to your children children to even to your family oh pastor i don't have no family god bless you same way <laughs> and god keep you in jesus name amen now may grace mercy and peace from god the father and our lord jesus christ be with us now henceforth forevermore amen and amen